Before we read the story, let us first know some small details about the life of Julius Lester, the author of Owner of the Sky, Oleron the Creator. Julius Lester was born on January 27, 1939 in St. Louis, Missouri, and he and his family moved around the Midwest and South during his childhood. He is an educator and award-winning writer of both children's and adults' books. He got involved in the American Civil Rights Movement when he went off to college in the late 1950s and involved himself in both music and writing, earning a BA in English from Fisk University, a historical black university in Tennessee. And he is the author of over 30 books for children and adults, for which he received numerous awards, including a Newbery Honor, Caldecott Honor, Coretta Scott King Award, ALA Notable Book, and Smithsonian Magazine Best Book of the Year. His books include uh, To Be a Slave, The Autobiography of God, John Henry, Time's Memory, Do Lord Remember Me, and Oleron, Owner of the Sky. So it's a Yoruban creation myth. Owner of the Sky, Oleron the Creator by Julius Lester. Oloron was the owner of the sky and the highest being. He lived in the sky with other spirits. In the beginning, the earth was all watery, just a marshy place, a waste. Sometimes, Oloron and the other gods would come down and play in the marsh waste. There were long spider webs hanging from the sky. They draped across sweeping spaces like graceful silk bridges. Yet, there was no solid land anywhere, no ground on which to stand. There could be no human beings under the sky, until there is a hard place where they can plant their feet. Oleron, the owner of the sky and the highest being, called the chief of the divine ones. This chief was the great god. Oleron told the great god, I want you to make a firm ground down below, right away. Here, Oleron went on. Take this. He gave great god a shell. There was a small amount of earth in the shell, and there was also a pigeon and a hen with five toes inside. Great god did as he was told. He went down to the marshland sliding down the spider silks. Then, he threw the earth out of the shell and spread it about him. He put the pigeon and the hen down on a big chunk of earth from the shell. The pigeon and the hen began scratching the earth with their feet. It didn't take long for them to scratch the soil over the whole marsh waste. That was how the firm, hard ground came to be. Great God went back to the sky. There, he found Oleron waiting. It is done. I've formed the ground. And it is solid and true, Great God said. Oleron sent down Chameleon to take a look at the works of Great God. Now, Chameleon took his time about most things. He walked slowly, and he went down the spider line from the sky carefully. He rolled his big eyes around, looking at everything. And slowly, he changed his color from sky blue to earth brown as he walked on the land Great God had made. Well. The earth is plenty wide, Chameleon told Oleron when he had returned. But it's not quite dry enough. Go again, Oleron commanded. And Chameleon went down from the sky a second time. He came back to report to the owner of the sky once more. It is well, Chameleon said. The earth is wide and it is dry this time. Good, Oleron said. He named the place Ife and it meant white. Il was brought to stand on Ife, and Il meant house. All other houses came from the first one that stood at Ife, and to this day, the city of Il Ife is the most sacred to all Ren's people. It took four days to make the earth. On the fifth day, great god was to be worshipped as the maker. Then, Oleron sent great god back to life 
to plant trees and to feed humans when they came and to give them foods. He planted palm trees. The humans would drink their juice. More trees were planted there, and the rain was made to fall and water them. The first people came from heaven. Oleran sent them down to the earth to live there. Great God made some of the people's parts out of the soil. He molded their bodies and heads. The task of bringing these still figures to life was left to Oleran, owner of the sky, the creator. Great God was jealous of Oleran's work. He wanted to give life to the earth figures he had made. I will watch Oleran so I can see how he does it, thought Great God. So he stayed with the figures and hid amongst them so that he might see the work of Oleran firsthand. But Oleran knew everything. He knew if somebody was watching. He saw Great God from where he hid himself. And he put Great God into a very deep sleep. Great God slept and slept. When he woke up again, all the people had come to life. He never saw it happen. So it is that Great God still only makes the bodies and heads of humans, both men and women. He leaves his marks on them though. And sometimes, the marks show how unhappy Great God is.